Okay, welcome everybody. This is Triforce. Um, this is a rebuttal video to um, MK James or James MK from the Tester Mike uh, forums, part of the VSM community, Valley Stream Monsters. And um, there's a lot of things I want to touch here and um, concerning your video and some of the comments that you actually made. And, uh, you know, someone of your age, uh, you're older than me, I can tell that you're older than me, but we pretty much come from the same age in gaming. <clears throat> and a lot of the stuff that you said, although it's your opinion, and you say I shouldn't respond to it um, because it's your opinion, well, it's my opinion, and, um, and I feel like responding. Because there are a lot of things you said in the video that, um, that are both hypocritical, inaccurate, and um, mainly ignorant. Now, I don't blame you for it because you don't know. And a lot of the information you're getting is, is hearsay. You ask who am I, but then you say I'm irrelevant, which I don't understand why you ask that then. I don't know why I'm involved in your video. Um, if you want to know why I was on X-rays um, streaming for the questions when they had to, uh, you know, Perfect Legend and um, strong, uh, some guy from um, MLG, well, I was requested to be on the show. And uh, because uh, Empire Acadia houses uh, two players, Tom Brady and Perfect Legend. So to start this discussion, or this topic, to be honest with you, we need to go to the beginning and answer a question you asked. Who am I and why am I in the MK community? Number one, I'm not in the MK community. I'm not even in the fighting game community. I'm in Empire Acadia. That's where I am. Our organization is a development company for digital communities, culture, and industry. What does that mean? Everyone asks us this question every time I get the same answer. As gamers, gamers, not fighting gamers, not FPS players, not RTS players, not puzzle gamers, gamers, period. Our job is to help develop the scene the best way we can. When we were kids, little kids, like the kids that are playing the video games now, going to video game tournaments was the best way to support a community and help it grow because you're a child. And that's the only thing you can do. You can't work, don't have a job, don't have any work experience. And for the most part, most gamers really don't take school seriously, sadly. So they don't even have the education to be able to help better their scene. The only thing they can do is play video games. My organization takes these talents, these potentials, and helps them find other ways than playing video games to help the scene. Early in 2011, Tom Brady approached me. I didn't approach Tom Brady, he approached me and said that he would like to help foster the MK scene. He's been around it for a long time. I met him at um, NEC in 2010 when he was talking about joining the Empire. And he, he showed me, he introduced me to Rio. He introduced me to 9.95, which is Phil. He introduced me to MKDC and the whole scene behind it. And he said he wanted to get Perfect Legend involved in the Mortal Kombat scene. I told him, no problem. Their first agenda was to make themselves competitively relevant, and that's what they did. They played the game, those two were at power up, they competed, you saw the results. Throughout the entire time, from power up to evolution, there was a lot of drama, gimmicks, things you don't know about, and it's fine, like I said, I don't blame you for it, you were ignorant to the fact. Perfect Legend was told to leave Empire Acadia so he could get a plane ticket to go to the PDP Nationals. Um, when he got to the PDP Nationals, he was told that they were going to market him and sponsor him in those whole nine yards. When he lost, they dropped him. Perfect Legend came back to me, arguing about the situation. I went to CEO. I saw him. Me and Tom Brady and Perfect Legend had a talk outside of CEO. Perfect Legend was like, what's going to happen to him? Because, you know, he doesn't want to tell anyone that he's back with Empire because, and if he is, then it's going to make him look like he jumped ropes to different brands. And that's a huge misconception about the organization. See, the organization is a development organization. As I stated in the beginning of this, of this particular topic, we don't necessarily have a team. 
players represent the brand of the company. They can join other teams. They've done it before. Um, this is, what is it? Justin and Reiki was on Team Capital at one time. This is back in like 09. Right when Street Fighter came out. You had other guys. Syndicate, Dead Cell, Deadly Alliance, Legacy, Infinity. These are all different teams within Empire Arcadia. Some of the teams aren't even inside Empire Arcadia. I have no problems with players playing on different teams if they want, as long as they stay true to the brand, which is EMP. So I told Carl, listen, if these guys are promising you flights here and there to go where you have to go, no problem, go. Carl was promised sponsorship for CEO. He was given a portion of money to go to CEO. He had to cover the rest on his own. He was sponsored by a particular gaming brand and team. You do the math. You'll find out who was supposedly sponsoring them. Everyone goes, well, Trifles, why don't you sponsor your players? Because I don't have any money. I don't have the money to sponsor players. Empire Academy is not a sponsorship organization. It's not a team. It is a brand. So we don't have that money to sponsor the players. Any money I've given any of my players, any charities that I've done, any housing that I've done has come solely out of me because I want to support gamers and gaming then that looks like it contradicts the whole thing. Then, Triforce, why are you involved in fighting games? I don't have to like the genre to support it. The mission of the Empire is to support gaming. Fighting games is a part of gaming. So although I personally don't like it, that has nothing to do with the agenda of Empire Arcadia. And our agenda is support gaming. And that's what I do. So Perfect Legend, Tom Brady, Sanford Kelly, and all these other gamers both former and present members in Empire Kitty who play fighting games, I support them. Period. Because they are a part of gaming. That's what I do. So you're right. I'm not an MK player. You'll beat me on your best day. Yada, yada, yada. So now that you have the education about Empire Kitty, let's go on further with uh, the situation concerning PL. So, Perfect Legend wins Evolution. The Mortal Kombat World Fighting Game Championships. Everyone goes, well, that's under speculation. Evolution is not the World Fighting Game Championships. Actually, it is. It is the largest fighting game tournament in the world. And, to be honest with you, in existence of the fighting game community. It fosters and houses so many different majors throughout the scene for all types of fighting games internationally. And that's why it got that stigma to become the World Fighting Game Championships. That's why it's called Evil Worlds. They have qualifiers in Japan, qualifiers in Australia, qualifiers everywhere, and then regional qualifiers in America, and then everyone from the world gears up at EVO. NetherRealm Studios then creates a belt called the Mortal Kombat Champion and puts that belt up at Evolution. Carl goes, he competes, he defeats all the opponents that he had to face, he won their belt. I don't understand how you guys are calling him a fraud champion. This is a fact. It's not your opinion. Now I can understand you don't like him being the champion. That's fine. That's your opinion. You're a grown man. You're, you're allowed to, you're entitled to your opinion to dislike Carl for whatever reason. But to try to denounce the facts, can't do that, man. I don't like the fact that Daigo is a two-time evolution champion back-to-back -back for Street Fighter. But the facts is, he is. Period. Can't take it away from him. All we can do is, we wait next year, next year, if he attends, he attends, and we compete against him, and we do our best to beat, beat him, you know, whatever the case may be. That's all you can do with Carl. So, after winning Evolution, Carl approached his sponsors at the time and asked them for sponsorship. They did not offer him anything comprehensive to his actual worth. Something Carl has learned back in the days of CGS and CGI with DOA. Carl approached me and said, I don't want to go through the same nonsense that I went through in DOA where they assassinated his character and tried to bury him. He climbed that mountain back then and they knocked him off pretty hard. He climbed the mountain again. Now he wants to choose the best way possible for him to make a career for himself in competitive gaming because this is his passion and to also help the community. So he approached me about it and I said, okay. I'm going to tell you some of the things that you need to do. I did a Jinx commercial with Justin Wong and Prodigy, and a line I said in the commercial was for all gamers worldwide.
Can someone get that for me, please? It's not what you win, but what you do with that win. That's a big thing that gamers cannot understand. They don't understand that winning a tournament doesn't mean anything if you don't do anything with it. So what does it mean to just win a tournament? What are you going to do? Just go back to the next tournament again and run it back? You think the community is going to grow that way? When you insult people who are trying to make moves outside of just playing games, you're insulting the entire competitive scene. People who I consider my competition, people I shouldn't, I shouldn't even name, Sir Scoots, Seth Killian to a certain degree, and other legends and luminaries who have helped build the competitive scene. You think they pressed buttons all their life to help get their respective scenes to where they are? You think Seth Killian could have gotten, you know, evolution to where it is by playing the game? He was on the U.S. team for Street Fighter, you know, playing against Japan, along with um, Joey Wizard, or well, well, actually it's Joey Seller, Mr. Wizard from SRK, the Cannon Brothers. You think they just keep playing games 24-7 to help get their scene to where it is? Those guys stopped playing games for a bit and said, hey, listen, we're grown-ups. We got to do other things outside of actually just playing these video games to make our scene grow. And they went the administrative route. Don't get me wrong, they still play. But they know their time and their place is up. Like you, your time and your place is up. Competing-wise, you should find another alternative route to help your scene. Right? You sit here and you bash, talk about VSM's the scene. Really? You're not the scene. You're a part of the scene. You're a group within your scene. You want to help your Mortal Kombat scene? Don't you guys have a tournament called Flawless Victory? Why is Flawless Victory on the same date as Power Up? I thought you was trying to help your scene. Power Up fosters all different types of fighting games. If you want to foster specifically Mortal Kombat, why do you have it on the same date? Why haven't you, a representative of your scene, gone and spoke to the people at Power Up and tried to change dates or incorporate Flawless Victory in your scene so you can focus Target demographic directly to Mortal Kombat. No. You want to sit here and you want to chastise me because I wear a power glove? I wear a power glove because I represent Nintendo. I represent classic gaming. That's why. And I don't shy away from it. This is me. This is what I do. When the, when the video games is done, I take it off. When the video games is on, I put it on. I represent. Like you. Representing VSM. So... To, to, to snap at me because I'm wearing a power glove and then talk about my world records and how you want to come get it, come get it. It's right here. It ain't going nowhere. Now, you're not dealing with a bunch of kids here. You, you, you talk about who am I? I've been in the scene just as long as you. Just as long as you. I roll with the real legends in gaming. The people who put the groundwork down. Walter Day, Todd Rogers, Ben Gold. Steve Sanders, Billy Mitchell, even Tim McVeigh, and we're not even friends. I roll with the real dogs who who laid the foundation down. Don't come to me acting like you've been the Superman of the scene. You're a contributor, like me. That's all we are: contributors, ambassadors, community managers. You're not a competitor. Your time is done. You're an old man, like me. Our times are done. Let the kids, who are, the young adults who are growing up playing the game, let them play the game. You're sitting here talking about you heard this and that from the community. You're a grown man. Are you actually listening to children gossip and trash talk amongst each other and then foster it behind it? Come on, and then you're serious about it. That's the sad part. I can understand if you were trolling, you're trying to entertain, you're trying to add some drama. There's nothing wrong with that, man. We need that in the community. Add spice. But then, for some reason, I don't take your video as a troll. I think you're actually very serious. That's why I'm approaching you like this. This is not to bash you. You know, I congratulate you for winning Mortal Kombat, you know, back in the days. That's, uh, you are part of the scene. You helped made the scene grow. But at your age, man, playing the game, it's not good enough, man. It really isn't. You're a grown man. I'm sure you know some type of contacts within the scene. Actually, I take that back. You don't own any contacts in the scene. Because if you did know any contacts in the scene, you would not have made the statement you made about Ed Boon. 
Ed Boon is why you are where you are in Mortal Kombat. Ed Boon is why VSM exists. Ed Boon is why Mortal Kombat exists. He's a co-creator. Then you're going to question what he said? Are you kidding me? Then you're going to diss the power glove and say you don't care if Reggie or Miyamoto signs it? Are you kidding me? You know who Reggie and Miyamoto is? Of course you do. But you said it anyway. In your mafia Italian gangster style. Like you mean something more than those guys. Those guys put you on. If not for Nintendo, you wouldn't have a Super Nintendo to play your Mortal Kombat on. If not for Nintendo, this scene would have died back in 83 and 82 when it crashed. When Nintendo brought it back up. So you can have a PlayStation. And so you can have a Sega. So you can have a Microsoft. So you can have a PS3 to play your Mortal Kombat on. Man, you want to keep it real? Keep it real, B. We're grown men, OGs in the scene. You wanted to see me about this? I'm going to MLG Columbus to represent EMP. I don't represent MK, VSM, or its scene. I represent EMP. And within EMP, there are gamers that represent particular brands. I represent Nintendo. Bill and Perfect Legend, they represent Mortal Kombat. Sanford represents Capcom, and so forth and so forth. I'll be at MLG Ohio. You want to discuss this like grown men? We can. We can sit down, put our heads together, see the best way we can to help improve the scene as a whole. Not just Mortal Kombat, but gaming all together. That's my passion. I sincerely hope that's yours.